Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody and welcome to a wonderful and fantastic and exciting new Ask an Engineer. We uh, spent a little time because we had to redo all the graphics. We just did yeah. them all. Just in the last 20 minutes, and we redrew them all. And YouTube decides to be down. So we're broadcasting live on Ustream tonight, which is going to be recorded and then we'll put it up on YouTube. Yeah, if you're watching this after the fact, we're robust. Matter. But uh, if you are, if you can't watch this, if you're not able to watch this right now, it's because you're on YouTube. You should go to Ustream. <laughs> uh, an exciting show tonight with, uh, of course, these new graphics that we spent uh, 20 minutes uh, feverishly drawing, and uh, new products, tutorials, lots of. Uh, is we that it? Don't ask. We got lots of stuff. Videos. We're still doing it. Tell them what's on tonight's show. On tonight's show, the code is Lockatron. That's right. 10% off all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Everything except for gift certificates and software. Show and tell. Amazing things in the world that people show and share. All around the world. On Hangouts. And hopefully eventually from Mars. Pack it. The mailbag's going to stop by. Read a great letter. Help wanted. Aided for jobs boards. We're going to have Collins Lab. Time travel. Wearables. 3D printing, some pie news, some new products. We're going to answer your questions. Some top, top secret stuff. Ooh. A trivia question, all that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. That's what we're doing here. Now in monochrome. Yeah. So. Also known as Adafruit Black. That's right. Okay. And shades thereof. All right, so let's get this stuff. Let's get this going. Okay. Code Zlogatron. Don't forget, ten percent off, everyone. We've got some stuff we're going to talk about. Um, first up, a little bit of um, housekeeping. Don't forget, two hundred bucks or more, you get free UPS ground in the continental USA. This truck will deliver to you. Yeah, reliable, amazing service. But what if you don't even want to wait for a truck? That's what right. If, what if you're like, I just need to do right now? In, in most, uh, we, this is our big news for the week. Mm -hmm. We have lots of news, but big news for the week. Um, same day shipping is here. So um, if you're in New York City and your zip code is one of the ones that are in the list on adafruit.com slash same day, you order by 11 a.m., you get it by 5. Huge. We are the first DIY maker company to do this. So you've heard it here first. But but what if you want it to be delivered to, say, Queens, and we don't deliver there yet? Um, you can just uh, choose something like UPS Ground, and it'll be there the next day. But will we ever expand to maybe yeah, have the same day in other parts of New York? Yeah, we're going to expand. We have to make sure every time we do choose to do something, we have to do it perfect, and then we continue to expand. Mm -hmm. So perfect, 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 perfect. Not like... Uh, sort of kind of good. Oh boy, worse. Yeah, so perfect, we'd rather perfect, have perfect, perfect, like perfect. a little bit of perfect than a lot of mediocre. Yeah. So we will we will expand to um, more areas and yeah. maybe we'll have even faster service. But this is our this is our first few days. We're gonna try this out, see how it works. We've already had so a couple, far. It's been working out. How many orders so far? Um, two, three. I have to check shipping, but we did at least two. Yeah, <laughs> we did at least two. Um, no, because one we know, and then one another one was. Yeah, there. well, we do it in batches too. Okay. So okay, next up. This week is Happy Birthday America. We're celebrating 4th of July. So everybody that ate a fruit is off on July 3rd, but we do have a small crew of people that are going to be shipping some packages. We gave the entire holiday off to the company. Some of the people that want to come in and get stuff done, we gave it to them as a float. Yeah, so they can like so, move the day to another yeah. day. So that's... Some people like, don't, they're like, well, I'm not going on a holiday. Some people are going on holidays. They're like, yeah, this is a really good time to have a day off. Yeah. Some people are staying here in New York because this is... The most American city <laughs> in the world, of it's, course. It's one of them. It's pretty high up there. Yeah. And then, um, so everything business as usual. This week's show, almost done with this, is brought to you by the letter W. W is for Wildcat. It's that uh, cute little robot that kind of chases Wonderful. after you. Wildcat. <laughs> it's cute. It chases you down and Wondrous stomps you. Wondrous uh, cat. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you like the video because it's like it shakes. Yeah, he's like, uh, 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 like goes, yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's from the Lady Ada coloring book, R is for Robots. We're up to W, almost done with it. So that means we've been doing a letter a week for at least almost 26 weeks. All right. And before that, we had the other. Uh, yeah. And I call you woke. So it's been a year. So it's coming up on a year ish. Yeah. Yeah, Ask an Engineer is going to be six years old in August. Okay. Next up, show and tell, Lady Ada. People from around the world show and share their projects, creations, remakes, and more. 
What was we on the show and tell this week? There. It's a nice little animation. Things are working out. What was, what was, what was, uh... um, we had a lot of people show up for the show and tell. It was lovely. We had some new people as well as some uh, well loved friends coming back for more. Tony DeCola from Adafruit Northwest. I uh, showed off a project he worked on uh, this week. He was interested in learning Rust, and he's been bugging me endlessly to learn Rust, which is this new programming language that's very C-like. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get to it, but I'm like really busy doing all these products and electronics and stuff. But he just went ahead and he uh, tried it out using a TNC 3.1, which um, is supported by uh, this the compiler LLVM stuff that they need to do to have it go from Rust to C code. Basically, you can't use it with an Arduino Uno, but a TNC 3.1 will work. And um, he basically wrote a demo using Rust. So you can write your code in Rust and link to the um, C libraries that are written for the TNC and like the Arduino C libraries. And uh, he said it was really fun. He like, tried, wanted to try out this new programming language. And I uh, asked him to do a write-up and maybe we'll put it up on the blog uh, so that people can try that out if you're interested in Rust, the language, not the um, electrochemical process. Noah and Pedro uh, also came by from Adafruit Southeast. They are on their third week of the 3D printed chess set. They're using bronze and copper fill, uh, metal, metalized filament to 3D print these very beautiful chess pieces. And um, like MOSFET is the king, yeah. and um, Adabot is the knight. And then we had these LEDs oh, really, as pawns. And um, I think uh, Connie, the capacitor, is uh, the, uh, I don't even know what the rook. Or the we have to, get, we have to start playing, yeah. i got to figure it out. We have a chess team here at Adafruit. We have like 14 people on the uh, chess party team. Uh, people play chess here, so we're going to print out a set of these. Uh, but it's very beautiful. Um, they talk about Tumblr techniques, and don't forget to check out 3D Thursday tomorrow at 3 p.m. with them and Pedro, where they talk about how they designed this chess set, all the things that they learned um, in that process. They also 3D printed a chess board that fits together. Um, Roberto came by with um, more work on his Pixel app. He made um, a method to upload GIFs and pictures to the Pixel, uh, like through 32x32 32 32 LED matrix, um, and also has a, um, uh, he had a clock, the LED clock that he was talking about, and he said he learned a lot of trigonometry making his clock, because you have to have the, you know, the, it's an analog looking clock. Um, VJ uh, came in, uh, not with a VJ project, but instead with a suitcase bar. It's a little, little, little mini suitcase that you open up and has like a little martini set in it, like for four. And she, uh, she cleaned it up and she got it from like a thrift store or, or, or an estate sale. And she added an EL sign that looks like a little martini glass and so it blinks. And so she carries this uh, martini set. You can tell that um, it's martini time. And then she opens it up and it has like all the makings for a martini. Uh, Alex from Puerto Rico showed up for his first time on the show and tell, and he uh, made a project for his uh, two sons. They play tag a lot, and um, he made uh, these t-shirts that have uh, gemmas and LEDs, and on the back there's a handprint, and when you touch the handprint, it capacitively detects that and um, lights up the LEDs, so it's basically LED tag, which is really, really it's a fun project. That's, so that's a really good idea. Um, Tida Everything uh, came in and showed off a robot that he made for class. He actually made it for Spanish class. Uh, since he really loved robotics and his teacher wanted to inspire him to learn Spanish to more, I guess because he's in, in school to, to learn this language. Uh, so they found a book that had a robotic tutorial in Spanish. And so he had to follow the, the tutorial guide uh, in Spanish and he presented to his class and he had to give the presentation in Spanish and he said it was bueno. Uh, and finally, uh, C. Scott came in with a Criminius update, showed off his filter front panel and some techniques for saving money when you use Front Panel Express, as well as a 3D printed switch extended, extender for when you have a switch and you want a panel on top and you want to have a little bit of a taller switch. He showed how to make how he made a 3D printed switch to extend the little uh, actuator. Okay. That's it. All right. All participants on the show get to ask the on Show and Tell sticker. Lady, how did they get on the Show and Tell? If you would like to join this uh, Show and Tell party that happens every single week, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, go to your Google Plus page and log in, and then go to plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit and look for the thread where we say, comment here to get added to the Show and Tell circle. Usually as an Adabot or the Show and Tell logo. Put your name there and say, hey, I want to show up my electronics project, my retro technology, my makerspace, my tools, my 
wearables, my Raspberry Pi, whatever possible cool stuff you want to show off, uh, comment there. We'll right click on your avatar, add you to the circle, and you'll join the other 500 people who are invited every single week. I don't get to be logged into uh, Google Plus when it's time, and we send out the invite 7:30 ish uh, every Wednesday uh, Eastern time, and. Um, Sometimes it gets really full, so if you wait a couple minutes and it says you can't join, it's because it got too full. Okay. We're only allowed to have nine people. That's All right, nice. packed mailbag. I'm here to give you a letter. Here you go, this is packet. We get letters from everybody. This is one from last week. This is from Jeff and David, and Jeff and David say, wow, I wanted to say a thank you to Express how absolutely fantastic it is to see the pride flag on your website today. Thank you, Lady Ada. Yes, if you noticed last, uh, week. It was uh, Pride Weekend here in New York City, and Adafruit celebrates all of our LGBTQ employees, friends, partners, customers, community. It was Allies, a giant everybody. celebration. Or people who just here. love rainbows. That too. And uh, obviously, uh, if you make uh, RGB LEDs for a living, you like rainbows. I love rainbows. So, so. thank you, Jeff David. All right, next up Adafruit Jobs Board. The best place online to post your skills and the best place to post your job if you're looking for some cool makers. This week, the jobs board has the following. Ooh. Harry Hobson. Hello, my name is Harry Hobson. I produce customized Arduino-based products, mostly for the lighting and entertainment industry. Should you require assistance in Shenzhen finding parts, finding good factory for smaller, large orders, I am happy to help. All the best, Harry. We've got oh, a million handy. emails. Yeah, he's very helpful. Thank you, Harry. So go to the Adafruit.com, jobs or Adafruit.com slash jobs. All right, some news in the world of open source hardware. But how come this logo isn't um, black and white? Well, it's because it, it's their logo. That's true. Yeah, I don't want to mess with their logo. Okay, okay I have some follow-up news here. So Michael Weinberg posted up a, a, his follow-up with kind of the end of the story, at least for now, with the U.S. Copyright Office, Stratasys, and more. So um, he did a summary of why the Copyright Office is interested in the uh, 3D printing world. So basically, at this point, um, Stratasys and uh, Public Knowledge and Michael Weinberg, they all came to one form of agreement. They all think that um, 3D printers should be uh, classified the same. Now, the difference is Stratasys thinks that uh, all 3D printers should have this DRM. And uh, Michael and others are saying, no, you see, uh, don't try to uh, uh, separate the types of 3D printers, professional and um, hobby. We should keep. We should have an exemption for all 3D printers. Oh, they were trying to just get an exemption just for the hobbyist printers. Yeah. But but. And he's like, no, no, Michael's no. Michael's like, no. What's the difference between hobbyist and, and yeah. professional? Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, it's a form one, a printer, a hobbyist, or professional. Like, it's pretty. You know, it's right in the middle there. The yeah. Consumer. So, anyways, um, what this basically means, if if we don't all keep an eye on this, there'll be, it'll be a felony, and there'll be huge fines. It's against the law to use filament uh, if you have to break the software lock to put it in your 3D printer. Don't like it. Um, speaking of protecting digital rights online this week, um, sign up if you're in San Francisco or just donate. DFF 25 is coming up. Um, this is the That's going to be a great party. This, yeah. This is the organization that will ultimately help us get out of trouble when we break a software lock so you guys can do more stuff. Um, we almost had to call it. Well, we did talk to them when um, Microsoft was starting to get upset when we did the ha Connect hack. So they are the first line of defense for people like us who try to unlock technologies for yep. others. So if you like them, um, now's a good time to support them. Okay, Arduino news. Um, guess what? It's what? happened. What? What happened? Well, we said we would try, our goal was to try to ship an Arduino by July 4th. Now, this was an incredibly crazy goal, and we didn't think it was even possible. We said, well, you know, we'll see what we can do. But here it is. It is true. The Arduino is made in USA. They are in our hands. We are sending the first batch to Arduino. Um, and the next day? Massimo, call me. I would need to know the address to send these to. We have them. We just yeah. don't know where to put it. Yeah. yeah, so these are photos. These are you know literally hot off the press. Yeah, we have um, we have our first batch. And uh, this is our kind of introductory batch. But we will be going to mass, mass manufacture uh, very shortly. It's always good. I always, I, whatever I do with them, what I do with Adafruit products, I don't know if you like notice, whenever we have a new product, it's always kind of hard, like it always sells out really fast, but I do that on purpose. Um, the first time we make a batch of something uh, manufactured for Adafruit, we only do like 200 or 300. And the reason for that is that we can get a quick sense of like, 
is everything okay? It's like, that's just enough people to like, yeah. make sure that people try it, any feedback, any weirdnesses, you know, because it's always the unexpected. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, it's like I have a tester that tests for what they expected things, like, you know, swap parts or like the wrong chip or like a bridge or a short or whatever, but um, it's the unexpected that you don't expect. Yeah. I, should, I should coin that. The answer yeah. is what you don't expect. And so we're going to do a small round, and then we'll have a lot more very, very soon. Once we get it, we're, we're going to start the big manufacturing run in, I think, uh, two or three days. Okay. Adafruit Learning System, how many tutorials do you have? 803. Seems to be 803. Yeah, so this week on the Adafruit Learning System, um, we have a few that I wanted to go over. Lady this one is a neat one. This is using iOS app development using Cordova. This is a, a Todd Trees came in and did a couple tutorials, um, and this is related to a next uh, one of the next tutorials. This is really neat. So, like, let's say you want to do app development for uh, iOS or especially iOS, but also Android, and you don't want to like, you know, have a developer account. You don't want to learn Swift. You don't want to like do a I mean, you want to do a little bit of work, but you don't want to like make a really complicated app. You can use Cordova, which is a framework that lets you use JavaScript and HTML to kind of make the user interface um, of an app and allows you to make like a very simple app. I don't believe you can submit these to the App Store. They're just for like uh, prototyping. I think if you, I think it's there's something about interpreted languages, but. Um, I could be wrong, I could have changed, but um, this allows you to very, very quickly make an app, especially for iOS, and we're doing a lot of stuff with Bluetooth, and Bluetooth is one of the only wireless protocols that you can use with um, uh, iOS, like an iPhone or, or a tablet, or iPad tablet, because Bluetooth Classic is locked. Bluetooth Classic is locked down, but Bluetooth Low Energy is available. So if you want to make something that interacts with hardware, um, and you don't have to use the Lightning connector, which is closed down, or the 30-pin connector, which is closed down, or Bluetooth Class, which is closed down, Bluetooth Low Energy is your way to do it. So um, we're trying to experiment how to use Cordova to let people make their own apps. Of course, Android is a lot easier because Android doesn't have a lot of these restrictions. It's a lot easier to like do stuff with Android. But so a lot of people have iOS and they want to write apps for them. So check this out. This is a light introduction to using Cordova. It's really neat. It lets you write apps with these. Okay. Thanks and it's free. This one. Oh, this is um, another tutorial. It's it, This is a, a, a tutorial of something that we do, kind of like the tester tutorials where we're like, here's how we test or manufacture something. Um, so I, I've written tutorials about like, here's how we make a pogo jig, you know, for, for Fab and Adafruit. And um, Todd's like, hey, I want to show how I use Travis CI, which is a continuous integration uh, test framework for the Arduino libraries. So we have 100 Arduino libraries. And um, one of the problems, actually somebody asked like, hey, what you know, what are all the boards that you have to test against? And we have to test against yeah. the Arduino Uno, the Mega, the Leonardo, the Flora, the Trinket, the Pro Trinket, um, the Zero coming up. Also, we're getting to the ESP8266, uh, the Dewey. Like, there's just a lot. And like, also maybe Particle. So there's a lot of different um, uh, Frame, uh, uh, dev boards that you might want to test against and with 100 um, repositories we're constantly doing pull requests and we're doing pushes and we're updating things and fixing things and, it, and instead of having to like pull out you know the code and, and we compile it for all of these things would be neat if there's something that would just compile it for you just to it won't tell you if it worked on a do it but it would at least tell you if it didn't compile which is a really good indicator that you broke something really badly um and then you know eventually maybe we will make a uh, continuous integration like a hardware test but for now this is uh good enough so travis lets you do that and automatically ties in with github so that um whenever you do a push it knows that it looks at the commit tries it out and sends you an email if it broke Okay, next up. This was on um, the blog today. Mm -hmm. This is the handsaw coach. So this is that Cordova tutorial, but made live. So <laughs> made, made live what he actually did. So this is um, a project using Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, Cordova, I and to write an iOS application. And this takes the VNO orientation sensor that we have, and it basically just transmits that orientation data to um, a phone. So you can sort of uh, turn it into a compass or kind of a three-dimensional compass. Uh, in this demo, it, it's a handsaw, so if you're, if you're sawing wood, you want to keep totally straight so you don't have any um, bevel in the wood. So this is, you know, this shows you a demo of how you would use this project to, so for example, make a handsaw yeah. coach. And uh, we're going to go to a video. It's a very beautiful, relaxing video. Ah, uh, handsaw.
That was a nice thought. Okay, this one we're going to do a live demo of soon. So yeah. um, I'll just we'll, talk about it briefly. We basically yeah. took a Locketron uh, body. This is, a, the, this is like a Kickstarter, or I think it was Kickstarter, or like a crowdfunded uh, Bluetooth Wi-Fi enabled lock. And we stuffed a phone in there and a Metro Mini, and we made a cell phone SMS controlled lock called Open Sesame. And you can, I'll, t I'll show demo it later, you can text S Open Sesame to it, and it'll open the door. Or you can text uh, Close Cadabra, and it will close the door. And I'll, uh, I'll show that off. But it's a fun tutorial showing how you can take the phone uh, and put it inside of something, get SMS messages, and do something based on the SMS. Yeah. OK. And then I'll stop. This is the Pixel Brain Cap construction, and we're going to show this as a video as oh, well, too. OK. I was going to so show we'll off the demo, to. but. Yeah. You want to show the demo? Well, I, I haven't tried this, but I guess I could. How about you show the video, and then I'll try this on? Yeah, well, we're, we're going to do that during the wearable section. OK. So maybe during the, in between the two videos, there's two. I'll, I'll put this on. It's going to take me a couple minutes. All right. So next up, the Adafruit comic book list is in effect. This is our reading list that we uh, do every week. This is all the staff members at Adafruit Deluxe Comic. Uh, this week, this is um, kind of a fun comic. Uh, Yexar went was sent from the Bleen Empire to conquer Earth. It didn't go so well. He was captured, and he many became a spacefaring species almost overnight. So check out this very cool web comic that's online, um, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I know how to use this thing? Yeah. Okay. Bleep 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 bleep. We have a Collins Lab. This is the skills of basics. And Colin is going to tell you all about how an oscilloscope works. Take it away, Colin. An oscilloscope allows us to see how an electrical signal changes over time. This is very useful for troubleshooting a circuit, debugging communications, or even just exploring and learning. The electrical signal is displayed as a waveform, with the y-axis representing voltage and the x-axis representing time. A digital scope like this one makes taking measurements very easy. We can see all of our current settings right here at the bottom of the screen. Right now, each vertical unit represents one volt, and each horizontal unit represents 200 microseconds. Even better, the scope automatically calculates some useful characteristics of the wave, such as its frequency, its period, or the time before the wave repeats itself, and its voltage, peak to peak. The horizontal and vertical scale controls allow us to zoom in on a particular part of the waveform and examine it more closely. And at any time, I can freeze the signal and scroll through horizontally to look for any changes that occur over a longer period. So let's say, for example, I would like to listen in on serial communication between a blue fruit board and my Arduino. I just connect the scope's probe by clipping to ground and connecting the tip to my test point. Now I can see the actual binary data being sent out to the board. And because my scope has two channels, I can use an additional probe to simultaneously view the data being sent from the blue fruit board. If the waveform appears unstable, I can change the point at which it begins sampling the signal by using the scope's trigger settings. So even though an oscilloscope looks impressively technical, and a bit intimidating. Using one actually makes electronics easier to understand. And they, they look pretty cool too, I think. Thank you, Colin. Time Lovely. travel time. We look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, or people or groups, or something that made a difference that kind of made it possible for us to be here. Well, celebrating a birthday, 
Now, the National Organization for Women, 1966 it was founded. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it, now. Yeah, so um, it was uh, basically started because um, there were still issues after um, women were supposed to be able to do all many of the things that men could do. Mm -hmm. So they started an organization um, to carry out the, the legal mandate that there shouldn't be sex discrimination. So they've... Uh, Sounds like they, so they, they mostly were working on the EEOC. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure, like there was laws that said like, hey, can't discriminate because, you know, it's a woman. And uh, so like, it, it wasn't working out. Okay. And so they said, okay, we need to get an organization together. So um, this was actually just, uh, it, it came together um, the founders were... Uh, There's like 8,000 names. Yeah, but it was on a paper napkin uh, that uh, Frieden scribbled the acronym now. Hey, Frieden, yeah. Yeah, so uh, pretty cool. Um, you know, I always think about um, how cool it is. You know, you having a company like Adafruit isn't always the way it was. I don't, I don't, I don't even agree with everything that now does, but yeah. like, I'm glad they exist. Yeah, so... The, I, I, they should be loud, they should... Get people's attention. Yeah, so that was there. Also, also celebrating an anniversary, uh, we got on Google Plus in 2011. <laughs> I thought this one was more historical. This is this yeah. is a little bit more uh, time travel. Yeah, it was more yes. a little time travelly. Okay. It's definitely tra time traveling three years to the past. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Wearables. This week, uh, we have two videos. Um, Becky has uh, part one and part two oh, yeah. of this cap. So we're going to do a part one. And then we're going to do part two. So let's start with part one. Bleep, 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 bleep. Today I'd like to introduce an ambitious project. It's a skull cap covered in neopixels and 3D printed diffusers to look kind of like a sci-fi EEG brain cap. Today we'll cover the sewing and soldering parts of this project. And in a future episode, we'll cover programming LED animations and even controlling the cap over Bluetooth using your iOS or Android device. So be sure to subscribe to catch the next part when it's posted. First, print out the skull cap pattern for this project. It's available as a tiled PDF on the Adafruit Learning System. The link is in the description. Cut out the pieces and tape together the long center pattern piece. Your fabric choice here depends on your comfort level with sewing. A non-stretchy woven material is going to be best for beginners since the slippery or knit fabric can be tricky. But I can tell you after prototyping different versions of this project that the stretchy spandex one fits best across different head sizes. Cut two layers of fabric under each pattern piece. First construct two side panels and the center panel, then join all three of those together. Top stitch the seam allowances and around the edges. Try on your cap to make sure it fits. This project is very labor intensive, so it's worth the time it takes to get the fit right now, which is a small proportion to the time it'll take to solder and sew all the pixels. Next up, prep a whole pile of small silicone coated wires by marking the length, cutting and stripping both ends. Tin your wires and mini NeoPixel pads before joining the two. Create many strips of seven to 11 pixels with all of the arrows in each strip pointing in the same direction. A foam head is very handy for the next step, which is to establish placement for the strips of pixels. Arrange and pin them to the cap, then use more wires to connect in between each strip. I also added extra power and ground wires as recommended for long runs of pixels, working them into the design of the cap too. Once your pixels are all soldered, wire them up to a flora if you plan to add advanced features like Bluetooth, otherwise you could get by with a Gemma for this project. Test them out and troubleshoot any connections now before proceeding to the sewing step. Now it's time to attach them all to the cap. Using clear or color coordinating thread, make stitches around the wires just before and just after each pixel. To make it as durable as possible, make each attachment independently knotted off so that if one thread gets snagged, it doesn't release a whole row of pixels. While you're sewing the pixels, print out a big pile of diffusers in white or translucent Ninja Flex. Sewing on each NeoPixel and diffuser individually is definitely the most time-consuming part of this project, and you can see I'm only a little over halfway there. Thanks for watching and join us next time when we'll cover adding a Flora Blue Fruit LE module and coding up some sweet animations for this head turning costume project.
All right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do part two next week. So we can get to yeah. the rest of the news. All right. So don't forget, Becky show is Wednesdays. This week, Colin was the guest host. Next week is Jessica. I'll probably be on after that. That's every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next up, 3D Come printing. Come for the Becky, stay for the yeah. Jessica or <laughs> Colin. <laughs> 3D printing. Um, this week we have um, a combination of 3D printing and also Raspberry Pi stuff. So before we get to that, um, tomorrow, 3D Thursday, hang out with Noah and Pedro. Um, they're going to show a lot of cool stuff, including, including the Adafruit chess set. But this week um, we're going to combine th our love of 3D printing with our love of Raspberry Pi. And yep, we got another video. That's what I love. This is the Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi notebook. You can build a pretty sweet retro mini laptop with the Pi 2 and a 3.5 inch Pi TFT. You can of course pick up the parts to build this project from the shop at Adafruit.com. This is a pretty cool 3D printed enclosure that's really easy to put together. The hinge prints with no support material and it's actually held together with friction. You can adjust the tolerance by fastening a machine screw and the hinge is really modular so you can use it on other projects. So to fit the battery in between the circuit, you can carefully bend the pins on the header of the Pi TFT and place a 2000 milliamp LiPo battery in between the display and the Raspberry Pi. You can also route the wires in between the circuit and use jumper cables to easily connect to the power and ground pins on the Pi TFT. So be sure to check out the guide on the Adafruit Learning System for a circuit diagram and a full tutorial where you can actually follow along and build this project. The PowerBoost 1000C provides 5 volts of regulated power to all the components and it's wired up to the slide switch. You can of course wire up a slide switch and then thread it through the enclosure and pop it into place. The audio amplifier is also wired to the PowerBoost and to the back of the audio jack on the Raspberry Pi so it's actually really compact. The JST cable on the LiPo battery simply connects directly to the JST port on the PowerBoost 1000C. So to close everything up, we'll use number 256 machine screws and that'll secure the cover to the enclosure. The USB ports are actually tucked inside the enclosure so your USB dongles are nicely hidden and out of the way. This mini chiclet keyboard is both adorable and wireless. It also features a trackpad, but you can also use the touchscreen on the Pi TFT. So now you can monitor your printers, remotely kick off a print, or check up on your baby and make sure everything is okay. And of course it has audio so you can jam out to your favorite stream on your SoundCloud. So if you're looking to play games, you can easily turn this into a Z machine and play your favorite retro text adventure games. But tune into next week for a bigger pie top, specially made for you gamers out there. But until then, thanks so much for watching. Okay, that was our 3D. We even have one here. Yeah, so let's cute. go to the overhead. Yeah, I'll show this off. This is, it's, a, it's such an adorable design. It's um, so yeah, this, this hinge is closed, and um, what this was inspired by is when I was in, in high school, there were these computers called librettos, or the Sony, uh, uh, what's it called again? Or the Casio Vizio? Or Cassiopeia? The Zion? Zion. Um, so these little palm top Sony computers. Sony little Vaya, that little, yeah, little transmetto Vaya. processor. Little teeny computers, and these were just so adorable, and, and uh, I always really wanted one, I never got one, so now um, I basically have one with a Raspberry Pi. And it's a three and a half inch screen, and the, the hinge actually also acts as a little bit of like a, a holder upperness. And um, you can run like X11 on it, and it has a touch screen as well, but you can also use like the touch pad, although I don't know. I have to turn on the touchpad. I have to turn on the touchpad. But um, so you can you can use this for like you know you can web browse and stuff. I don't have it connected to the internet right now because I just turned it on. Um, but this is an adorable little computer that you get That's to build yourself, cute. and it has um, a spot you can stick USB stuff in. You can have a USB key, and it has a wireless keyboard and an on/off switch. So I don't know. I thought it'd be uh, fun to uh, make a little mini laptop, palm top, yeah. a really big palm. Um, not great for playing video games because it doesn't have graphic acceleration, but you can do like text stuff where you can see you can use X11 and, okay. and, and other graphical things. Just not good for playing Doom. All right. Don't forget the code is Locktron. 10% off the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. It's new product times, Lady Ada. Wow. Here it is. Zoom. Okay. Let's uh, go through some of these first ones really fast. Okay. 
Okay, so new, 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 yeah, new, new. Um, we're gonna get a new song too. New, a but new for song now, for Yeah, but for now, it's just you singing new. New. Okay, so this is Wire, and I'm just gonna click through as you say what it is. These are um, silicone, str uh, silicone covered stranded wire, and we've had these in individual, um, like p pieces, like like one meter, or two meter, I think, two meter strips. But a lot of people email us and we're like, uh, we really want a lot of this, and this is like really great stuff. And so we're like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll be able to get it in, in larger pieces. So um, we ordered up these in 25 foot spools, which is about like uh, seven and a half, eight meters. And it comes all these different colors. I can show it off in the overhead. And what's nice about these is compared to most wire, which has vinyl coating, like BFZ coating, um, it's extremely flexible and it doesn't crack the same way. Like if you're frustrated by like using normal wire and whenever you solder it, like the sheathing moves back and that's really annoying because you're like, oh, you clip it and then you like tin the wire and then it moves back and you have to clip it again and it's like, mm, it's annoying and it keeps, it keeps shrinking back. Silicone doesn't do that. Um, it's, uh, you can heat shrink it, it doesn't melt. You can um, have, use high voltages and it's fine. So this is, I think 26 gauge. This is a good size for stranded. It, it's a little thicker and we'll probably get 30 gauge as well, but um, just really handy 25 foot spools, little okay. spool. Um, I use this stuff for all the prototypes. The prototypes I'm going to be showing later, the demo uh, uses silicone wire. I love it so much. Right. Next up, um, we've got this great. Um, I'm going to skip okay. to. Uh, hey, yeah, I'm going to go to. What do you want to do? This one first, so. Okay. Yeah, this is. Okay. They're clip. all the same, pretty much. Yeah. It? Well, we got these. What, are, what would you call these? Like these are micro grabbers. So, micro grabbers. Thanks for asking. Yeah, micro grabbers. And then are these other ones that are coming up? They're also? different. Yeah, that's why I have these uh, out of order. Yeah, yeah, these are the black micro grabbers. Yeah. And um, these are for grabbing onto very small um, connections. Can you kind of show it here? I'll also show it on the overhead because this one is definitely one that you have to, to show up close. Um, so this is like my my victim here. Um, Good so for the, reverse engineering stuff. Great for reverse engineering stuff. So these little grabbers, you can see that there's a little, um, like two little pincers that come out and they can grab onto something. So do you want to, can you zoom in even more by chance? Yeah. Just because this is like so small. Sure. Little grabber guy. Go in. Go all the way in, perfect. Yeah. People are gonna be freaked when they see this is like coming for you. It's coming for you. Um, so these little grabbers, they push out, and then you see the ends have a little curve on them. So when they pull in, they they grip on. So for example, if I wanted to probe onto these TQFP wires, um, I can get the little legs in and grab, and it isn't shorting onto the sides. It's only grabbing onto the actual pin. Well, let me, I have to, it's hard to do this without seeing, but you can also grab onto pins in the center if you want. Um, it's best for SOIC, uh, TQFP, like these SOT 23s. This is really great for that. I'm just like, I'm like, hey, I want to grab right there. Bam, you are grabbing. And then you can connect um, any kind of uh, uh, female, female, premium uh, jumper wire onto here. Um, but whenever you have to like grab onto like, you know, the switch, you don't want to solder on. Oop, hold on. I can see what I'm grabbing. Grabbing, and you are grabbed. Um, so I love these a lot, and so that's why I stock them. I use them whenever I have to like go in and probe something really small. Okay. And they're Pomona, so they're really like, Yeah, they're really nice. Pomona stuff is nice. Very nice. Okay, so um, in addition to those... So then there's these mini grabbers. Yeah, so in addition to those, we have these colorful mini grabbers. Mini grabbers, not micro grabbers. They, these, these come in a pack of 10, and they're less expensive. You get, you know, we get more because they're much bigger. And they're, they have a similar kind of idea. They have a single hook, and when you push on the probe, it, probe, the hook comes out, and it also grabs something. But these are better for larger connections. So um, you want to go to the overhead, and I'll show the... Uh, yeah. I'm, Raspberry I'm very zoomed in. Is that okay? Yeah, this is this is the best. This is what we're doing. So, for example, I've got this this um, yellow hooker here, with it's got and this one doesn't have the um, the pin, so you have to open these up and solder to them. They have a little uh, solder tab here. It's, it's oh, very cool. easy to solder to, but they're not the the micro grabbers. They have a little um, pin. Um, 
shove a, a socket header into to, to connect to, but these you have to actually solder a wire onto. Um, but same idea, you have a single hook coming out, and it has this nice shroud here that protects it and also lets it kind of make a good grab. Cheaper ones don't have like all this extra molding, um, and so they, they're more likely to short, but you want to grab onto, say, um, a 0.1 inch header, yeah. perfect, and you see it doesn't it doesn't short the, onto anything around. The quality it. with these things actually matters. Like you think. No, you it, really you, don't want to like. You think it wouldn't, but these. But this is like one of the few things like it actually matters. That's why they like put their brand all over it and everything. Yeah, and then you can also grab onto like this um, SOT uh, 28, uh, 80, 89, TO89. I don't remember exactly what the, the part number is. Um, larger, larger pieces you can grab onto this. So this is the the larger version. Um, in comparison to the um, the micro grabber, you can also um, one trick I sometimes like doing is you want to grab onto like that connection there instead of soldering. Yeah, just hook you on. hook onto the end. Boom, and okay. then bam, you are bam -o. connected. All right, next up. So um, micro grabber, you get ten of those. Yeah. Uh, next up, um, you got this nice little sockety thing. Yeah, this is a so tap adapter, and this is actually what you're getting. It's a little. Little JST connected onto a board with these big pads, and you get a cable. And the reason um, for this is like people who want to use like NeoPixel rings or strips with uh, Gemmar Flora, and they want to sew them in, and they don't want to do any soldering. This lets you kind of do a solder wire to sewing adapter. And so I have a little demo. Can you um, go there ahead, but then also zoom out? Because it's, it's like crazy close. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yay! Bring it out. Thank you. Hello. Um, so this Gemma, for example, is wired up to NeoPixel, NeoPixel. And then let's say you wanted to have a NeoPixel ring. Well, um, you wouldn't be able to solder to it because it's very, uh, sorry, you wouldn't be able to sew to it because the pads aren't nice and big. Uh, which is very useful for sewing. So instead, you have this adapter, you um, put the adapter here, you sew to it, and then you have these nice wires that you have, and then you can solder those to anything you like. Okay, right on. Well, let's keep going. Simple, um, but useful. Yeah, okay, we're up to some um, electronics here. What is this this is the Esperino Pico. This is a JavaScript microcontroller. It's an STM32, either M4 or M3, can't remember the exact part number, um, but it's a 32-bit ARM processor, Cortex M3 or M4, and it has a JavaScript interpreter on it, and so you actually program it in JavaScript. Um, and I always like to think of the people who um, tell me that I'm a, a pansy for programming in C, <laughs> not close to the metal like assembly. So here you can program close to the metal in JavaScript. Um, there's enough flash and RAM on this processor to, to run JavaScript, and you can uh, connect sensors and GPSs and, and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And there's there's quite a bit. Uh, there, we have the larger JavaScript board, and this is the miniature version. It's a more breadboard friendly. It's also less expensive because not as many parts and extras and like the connector for micro USB and all that. Um, but yeah, you can connect to it and just start typing in JavaScript, and you can save it and we play it later. It's totally crazy for... Yeah, and then we also have, here you can see all the different pieces and then... Yeah, there's a lot of alternatives going on here. You can like, you know, boot and you can <coughs> solder on a JST connector and, and have a battery powered, but it's like a little JavaScript microcontroller. So I, th I just think it's adorable. We've got the Python microcontroller and JavaScript microcontroller. And then okay. now we have Rust, so we can get all these languages. All right, next up, it's a lock. It is a lock. This is the guts of the Lockatron V1. So this is a, a, a Y Combinator company. Um, they did either crowdfunding or something, something. I don't remember if they had crowdfunding. Maybe they did Indiegogo. I don't remember. Um, but basically, it's a, it was a cellular, uh, sorry, a um, cell phone controlled lock where you would, um, you would, the the Lockatron itself would connect over Wi-Fi. It actually had an electric imp inside of it, which we also sell, and it would connect to Wi-Fi, and then you would use an app on your phone that would connect through the Wi-Fi to turn your lock on and open and closed. And um, I think they're up to like revision three now. And so they had all these extra like bodies, the, the enclosures. Uh, and they're like, well, we don't, we have no use for these. We're not going to sell the old version anymore because the new version is like spiffier. So they asked us, hey, would you like to pick up a whole bunch of them at a discount? We said, yeah, sure. Yeah. And so we did. And this is what it looks like on the inside. You can take it apart. And um, it's got this like gear inside and um, motor, and I'll show the, the guts in more detail. This is how it's supposed to mount, like you have the, the flicky lock type deadbolt, 
it goes on top and you can attach it and then uh, yeah. it would open and close. You can still open and close it using um, the, uh, the top there, but it, it'll also motorize. You can do either or. But, you know, when you have stuff like Adafruit products and you add a little bit of Internet of Things, hi! Hi, I'm Nimbus. I'm Nimbus. The friendly <laughs> Internet of Things I'm cloud and totally me. not going to do everything bad to your electronics. Um, so what you can do is you can add um, Fauna. And we have a demo. So this well, because they, they had Wi-Fi. So, yeah. And I'm like, Wi-Fi, that's so lame. Yeah. Let's do cellular. So this is a, a video demo. You can talk over it right now. All right. You can um, say what's this going. demo, yeah, I'll actually be able to also show this live. But um, I use an SMS message. And when I send the text, open Sesame. And uh, yeah, you can make fun of this phone. But this, this phone works great as a demo. Um, it uh, opens the lock. So you see it looping. And then you can also text it close. And it will close the lock. And here's a version showing it with the guts open. This is it like on a breadboard. Um, demonstrating it and you can see the the red orange center that's the the geared part that opens and closes and there's a battery pack as well okay and then um, but now we want to see it live so let's go to the overhead yeah we're gonna do a live demo this is always dangerous this is always really dangerous so we're zoomed out all the way right yeah so this is the Lockatron so I'm, I I kind of opened it up but yeah you can you can always open and close the lock with this part but then if you open up, under here there's a geared motor. And then this is um, the part that's controlled either by um, you know, this thing or the geared motor, whichever one is turning. There's a battery pack here, but I put in another little battery because this battery pack, I decided to stick, for, uh, stick it with the motor so that you have a, a separate power supply for the motor and cellular mo um, modem. It's a good idea, especially when you have motors involved, often having se split supplies is a good idea. And also, uh, I don't know, I want to get this demo done. Um, and here is a Fona. So I like that you could fit all of the electronics inside of the enclosure. I did. It was yeah, a little cool. bit of a challenge. We have this, this sticker antenna. So this is the Fona. And then um, we also here have um, the Metro Mini, which is a little Arduino compatible. And the text underneath here. And then we also have a, a TB6612H bridge. There's a motor control. Just because this motor is big enough, you can't drive it directly from Arduino pins. You have to have a motor driver to actually do the on-offness. Um, and uh, you can check out the tutorial if you want more details, but basically the Metro Mini talks to the Fona and says, hey, um, let me know when you get an SMS message. You can, you can actually put it to sleep mode and it will uh, drop a pin, interrupt, and say, hey, like an SMS came in. Um, so for example, if I We're gonna do this. have this phone, and I go to It's a rare thing, you don't have a phone. This is the phone that you use for this demo. For this demo. Yeah. Okay, so, so you're going to do this live on So the I have this demo, and it says... Open Sesame. Open Sesame, and it's to the Ting card, which is in yeah. here. And I send the message. So this is, like, going to go to space. It's going to go to space and back. Yeah. I like that. I like a little message sent, and it's going to... Ping. It worked. It live demo. Woo. Yay. And then I'll do the other one just to show you can... Because it, the demo is actually more about, like, you can have different messages. So now you're going to do what? Close. Close. So hold on. So now I have a message that says, close Kadabra. So I send this message, sending, message sent. Goes through the entire network, gets to the phone, and it closes. That's cool. So this demo shows you know, not only how to control, a, uh, how to use the Locatron body, which is kind of interesting, and how to pack stuff inside of it, but also like how to use a Fona, a Metro Mini, um, to make something cellular controlled. And, and you know, using the Ting SIM, it's only like six bucks a month. So you can have something that's tucked away and cellular controlled. So I think that's kind of neat, showing Internet of Things. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't Good even work. use a cloud service. It's just over SMS. Okay. And with that, we're done with new products. Ta-da. Yay. Okay. So we're going to jump right in. We're going to do some top secret. So um, we have some new products. Um, don't ask. Just uh, we're going to show you some stuff. But can I say what they are, Laura? You're going to say what they are, but okay. no one can ask questions. Shh. Top secret, okay. Nice animation. It's top secret. It's top secret. Yeah, okay. Uh, first up, this thing. Um, this is uh, some RFM69 module testing. It's actually prototypes I got made quite a few months ago, but I'm finally writing the, the library code that I'm, and testing it out. And these are really great little modules. Like This one in particular is 915 megahertz, but it's one of the things that's missing from the Adafruit shop is we don't have a, a, a radio, uh, like a point-to-point -point radio network. Um, that, can, that isn't like 2.4 gigahertz, so I wanted to have a couple other frequencies, and people re recommended these for us, and uh, I like them a lot. Okay. 
Fona. This is a, this is like a came in today. Big Bertha Fona. This is the Fona 3G um, second prototype. Yeah. So we will have 3G Fona. Yeah. Very exciting. All the times that people ask, are you ever going to have a 3G Fona? The answer is always yes. We found one. Yeah, we just have to get get it to it the right way. We had to get the right module. All right, and then you're making a um, princess Fona. Princess Fona. So you're Which making maybe 3G. I don't know. You're going to make a 3G pink princess Fona phone. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that's NeoPixels cool. underneath that dial, too. That would be cool. Okay, that's nice. Okay, well, we're done with the uh, secret. That was top secret for the night. Bang. All right, don't forget, code is still Locktron. 10% off all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to take a few rounds of questions, and yeah. then we're going to do some trivia. I'm going to put this back together. Okay, start typing your questions. Oh, someone want to know the heat rating for the... Um, the wire that you showed, do you know anything about that? Oh, I don't remember the actual value, but, um, well, you can always look up, like, the MSDS uh, spec sheet for silicone, yeah. but it's also in the tech specs of the product. I just don't remember off the top of my head. It's, it's hot enough that when you solder, it doesn't melt, which is all I really care about. It's, like, 300 degrees. Okay. All right. Um, Hold on. I'm tucking this electronics in here. I'll answer a question about some of the show stuff. Yeah, so... We stream to YouTube and also to Ustream because once in a while one of them is down. Like today. So tonight, uh, YouTube was down, and that's why we have Ustream. And we also record the show. Um, George, who's uh, worked on the show for years now with us, he's recording the entire show in addition to the new product section, and we're going to have Thanks, those George. full videos up. Um, let's see. How many Arduinos have we made so far? Well, uh, right now, if you... 300? Yeah, 300, and if you count gem, Gemma's... 200, 200, Gemma's 220 in the, or Gemma's something? Gemma's in the thousands, and then um, Arduino Gemma's in the thousands, and then Arduino's a couple hundred. This is the first first run. Less than 30 days ago, uh, they're like, go. And less than a week ago, we got like one of the approvals. We actually we got, yeah, we didn't get samples of yeah. a week ago. But um, we have a, a couple hundred now, but we're doing uh, many thousands is the next run. But it's always good to start with a small number, just in case. Never know. Got to get things like optimized. Yeah. Uh, could you look into Ustream Pro so you don't have to watch the ads during the interrupt stream? Uh, that interrupt the stream. You can you run an ad blocker and it'll um, it'll, work. it'll block the ads. But also you can pay a dollar, I believe, or four dollars, and then Ustream will make it ad free. I think for Ustream you. Pro is like like ten thousand dollars. Yeah. For us, it doesn't make sense because mm. it would be it would outweigh the costs of it would just. <laughs> We'd rather, we just use Ustream usually. Yeah. So. Or yeah, YouTube usually. Yeah. So but, many, so you many know, use. These are all free services, so. Uh, well, the Fona 3GB backwards compatible with the 2G networks. Yes, it actually does uh, drop down to 2G. It has, still has a quad band GSM. Uh, I haven't actually been able to test that because uh, in our area we have really good 3G, so it's WCDMA. But um, according to the module manufacturer, it'll, it'll drop down to GSM. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that was the speed round because we got to get out of here because yeah, we're yeah. running. Mm -hmm. But we did everything on time. Okay, you know what time it is now? Trivia? It's trivia question time. Lady Ada, what are the rules for trivia? Um, the rules are if you've won a prize from the show before, you can't win again. Only one winner per lifetime. Uh, what's the prize going to be? Is it a Lockatron or is it going to be the Sparina? What do you want to give away? Let's give the little JavaScript. Device. Esperino Pico. That's the, a really good Esperino one. Esperino Pico. Okay. You get an Esperino Pico. Es Esperino Pico. Um, yeah. First person to answer the qu question correctly yeah. in the Ustream because YouTube. There's only now. Ustream tonight. This makes it easy on me. There's only Ustream. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. And the question is. The question is, if you go to Adafruit.com/sameday, at the bottom of the page, there's a list of zip codes. There's a lot of zip codes, but the first zip code is what I'm looking for. So whoever types in the first zip code in that long list of zip codes that we ship to in Manhattan now, same day, which means 11 a.m. up to uh, you order before 11 a.m., you get it by 5 p.m. same day, just like a Google or an Amazon. But we're like in the makerspace. So what what is that URL again? It's adafruit.com forward slash same day. One word. And you just have to find the first zip code on the page. Tappy, tappy, tappy. Searchy, searchy, searchy. <laughs> pasty, pasty. I gotta get like everything crammed Just, back into okay. the Uh Let's see. Nick Kelbass, congratulations. You got it. Yay. Yay Email Nikhil support. Kelbass. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Email support at adafruit.com. And guess what you get? You get one of these. Esperino Pico. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Okay. 
Well, that's the show for tonight, folks. Thanks for sticking in there, especially when multiple internet providers decide to, you know, just take a break. Um, we'll see everybody next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've been doing this for a while. We'll see you then. We'll, we'll, we'll do it one way or the other. We Somehow, can do shadow puppets. Oh, some whatever. Way, we'll do it at Ask Your. I will draw a picture and mail it to you if I have to of each frame, and we will get this information out hey, there. Hey, that's my hair, man. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll see everybody next week. Um, thank you, everybody out there who supports Adafruit, and thank you all of our customers, community, friends, uh, staff members that are out there that help Cat. us. Cats. Um, speaking of, picture of MOSFET. Meow, meow. That's a good, that's a good picture. That goes well with the uh, black and white theme we've got. And here is your moment of Zener.